I'm like, man, you know, who is the screw? You know, uh, I need to take me over there so I can get me a screw tape. So that's how it happened. They took me over to schools, and uh, school was all Broadway at the time near Hobby Airport, and took me over there. I bought my first screw tape, and then, you know, uh, took it back to my hood. We we jamming it. You know, we love it. fell in love with it. And um, at the time, I was already doing my little rap thing um, uh, on Botany. You know, we, we you know we come from Botany Street in Cloverland, so you know we out there hustling and doing our thing. But we also had a little spot where we would go and I would do a uh, little raps over instrumentals over mixtape at uh, one of my people house. He was like a DJ at the time. He was something like a screw, but. He wasn't screwing things down, you know. He was just uh, we was making mixtapes at his house, so we had our little rap thing kind of going already. But then uh, mm-hmm. when I heard the screw, I was like, uh, I was like, man, it'd be cool to rap over this slow tempo. You know, it, it should be a lot easier. You know what I mean? So that's how I kind of right. came with the idea. I was like, man, once I got the mixtape, I was like. So I, I went back over to the schoolhouse and just asked him like, "Look, man, uh, I got this idea. I want to kind of, I want to, I want to make a mixtape, but on one of my instrumentals, I want to rap, and basically I want to freestyle over one of these instrumentals. You know what I mean? And, and see how it comes out." And he was like, "Oh yeah." So basically, I was kind of like one of the first ones to ever even like freestyle over a screw tape. You know what I mean? I kind of like started that whole trend like you know what i mean me and uh fat pat we was all you know he was like right there with me too and that right there around the same era same time so because uh fat pat he's also from like uh he's from kennedy heights which is also a neighborhood like right across the street from cloverland so we all are from the same little section so Anyway, we uh, you know, we so I was basically one of the first ones to rap on the screw tape and had that era and help screw get the uh get his music to the masses. You know, we 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 helped him popularize the screw music and the screw movement. You know what I mean? So right, it's like yeah, it's like we needed screw and screw needed us because we was like the door to the streets. You know what I mean? So. Once we hooked that up and, you know, and uh, the street started hearing about, you know, people rapping on it, us, Fat Pat, them, they they, they took a, a good vibe to it and everybody took to it. And, and basically it took off, you know what I mean? It took off and took off to the point where people like the little Kikis and the ESGs and everybody, the UGKs, everybody wanted to come rap on a screw tape, you know what I mean? And to the right. point where to the point where screw screwed up the world, you know what I mean? So now now that's how we that's how we here today and talking about screw because he just screwed up the world, man. All from that that one instance. Just from scroll, just from flowing on that screw tape and getting it to the streets and it reached the masses. It reached the masses, man. It's just, you know, that's what it was. It was something. It was something new and different, and like you said, it spread across the globe. You know, and you spread across the globe. Being, being the guy that spit on on that first, I mean, that's that's got to make you feel real good, knowing that you helped. Yeah. Screw you know, the early stages. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. But, 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 but you know, doing it while we was doing it, we just having fun, kids, just having fun, you know. I always wanted to be a rapper, looking up to the older rappers from, you know, Scarface, them, you know, our local rappers, to all the way to the New York rappers, Run DMC, them, all the way to the West Coast, to EZs, the NWAs. You know, we looked up to all that. So it was just wanting to be like them, but just kind of in our own way, just, you know, want the world to hear what we was doing and how we was doing it from our point of view. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And uh, Screw helped yeah. us be like he helped us be he helped us get our music out there to to the world to you know see how we how we did things down here in Houston. So you know that was that was a big thing, man, for real. All oh, right, yeah. when y'all was doing oh, yeah. it, did y'all know it was gonna have a big as big of an impact as it did? Like when they was when the tapes really started spreading like wild, 
wild flowers that y'all just be like, damn, man, this shit really yeah. popping off. Yeah. Uh, now, when, when we did it, I, I, we always knew that we were sent tra- uh, trendsetters, you know what I mean? We always knew that, you know what I mean? But when we did it, we actually didn't know that. I didn't know that it would be as big as it is today, you know what I mean? But uh, right. we always knew we was trendsetters and setting trends, and, and people would kind of, like, follow the stuff we do because we kind of made our own lane, you know what I mean? We just, like, well, you know, we, we want to be really stars, in our hood, in our area, our side of town, you know, south side, as long as, long as them people felt it, that's really all we we was on. But but what's funny is um, when we was first making the tapes, they was really uh, personal tapes. Screw used to make, like, each personal tape, like, he would make a tape for me. I would pay him $10 for a tape, you know. He probably would have one for Willene. Willene got his own tape. Fat Pat got his own tape, and so only way you would hear those those tapes is if you was riding with me in my car or you ride with Fat Pat in his car, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But what happened was, yeah, what happened was uh, it actually got so popular to school was overwhelmed with people who wanted to do the same thing that we was doing and that he do everybody, you know what I mean? He couldn't do everybody. So... He was uh he had so much traffic coming and um his dad he was staying with his dad at the time and his dad was his dad was like you know sh- you know we got he come home from work you know he got the whole hood in his house in his apartment so he like shit man, right uh screw you got to move around you know what I mean so screw moved around and um he moved to uh a- another house he got his own spot his own house. He kept doing the same thing, but when it got so big, it, you know, he he had to, he he pulled me to the side. He was like, "Man, see, uh, whenever I do a take for y'all, just know that it's gonna be duplicated." You know what I mean? He was like, "So right. I can't do a take for each and everybody." He said, "You know what I mean?" So he said, "So if I make a tape for y'all, you know, I'll make the tape, but just know that I'm gonna duplicate it." You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how it really 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 took off. But at that time when he told me that, I always wanted to be a, a real rapper, a real MC. You know, I always wanted a real album on the shelf and all that. So I was like, you know, that's cool too. You know, because when he say duplicate, I'm like, damn, I need to do that myself too. You know what I mean? Make some real quit quit rapping over other people instrumentals, and I need to do my own thing. But but at that time, he started dubbing people uh, flows. So I kind of had, basically, at that time, I kind of had, like, I made a few few screw tapes. A lot of people hadn't heard them. And they heard me on some of them, but not as many as uh, Fat Pat and Kiki. Because I had, I had uh, me and Botany, we had actually kind of left and started doing the real rap thing yeah. and, and pressed up real album, you know what I mean? And at that time, Kiki and them, they were still... At Schoolhouse, once he started to duplicate those tapes, and that's how Kiki and Fat Pat is like, you know, uh, like real, real big in the underground. Like way more people know them mm-hmm. and know they old freestyles. You know what I mean? Because they stayed there. That was their studio for them. Schoolhouse was their studio. You know what I mean? And I was in the mm-hmm. real studio, so I was kind of moving fast and because I knew where I wanted to go with my dream, and um. They were kind of like, you know, a little bit stuck there until we dropped the album. But they stayed there and got hella popular, you know what I mean? So popular and caught their wave, which was cool. And, you know, we and that's when we dropped, like, Smoking and Leaning in 95. And mm-hmm. then followed back, though, Thought of Many Ways, the double CD uh, in 97. So by that time, all them couple of years, they, they put out, Hundreds of screw tapes, you know what I mean. So, really, really, really knew who they was. You know what I mean. They knew, they knew. Yeah. So, I right, because y'all, y'all had the, y'all had the big early. shot records, wasn't? It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all started your own record, label, right? Started man, shout out to D Red too, man. I used to watch DVDs yeah. of y'all back in the day, man. And that boy D Red used to have me dying <laughs> laughing for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
D Red, my OG man. You know what I mean? I grew up under him too, and uh, you know, like I said, I was always one of the youngest ones and shit. And uh, I just had to dream real early. But D Red was always like the OG. He used to come to the hood and come through the hood, had hella money, and you know, had his BMWs and jewelry on, looking like Ice T <laughs> coming through the hood. That was that was D Red. He was the Ice T of the hood. You know what I mean? That, that's, yeah. my, that's my boy there, yeah, man. So I remember one DVD you know, he told this dude, man, I don't drink no goddamn Rossi, man. He was talking about some Carlo Rossi, boy. He wrote some <laughs> shit out there, nigga, about some Carlo Rossi. We don't drink that shit over here, man. I yeah, said, this man. dude yeah. here, boy. <laughs> yeah, he going to Great personality, like man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and D-Red, and see, while we was flowing on the screw tapes, uh, over other people instrumental, D-Red was, was kind of one of the ones that, Helped me get away from that because he was actually producing already for a group uh, by the name of Coppertone. Coppertone had mm-hmm. an album back in the day out of Houston, and they was hard, hard, hard. I like to, you know, uh, this guy named Poop. He put them out, and um, and all them kind of guys like that. That's them guys I look up to, and you know, kind of following in their footsteps and stuff. But D. Red was making those beats, banging them out, and um, and uh, so I was like, man. I really didn't know how people make the beats because I was just rapping over the instrumentals off the off the albums, and some mm-hmm. somebody came to me from the hood. They was like, "Man, D Red, he know how to make beats. You know what I mean? Go get with D Red or something." So I was like, "No oh, shit." So I had went about a beat machine. I ain't even know how to work the motherfucker. So I bought the beat machine, and next thing you know, D Red making beats for the smoking and leaning was the first song he. Uh, he ever made for us in my living room off my beat mm. machine. So, so and that started the trend. Now he did every beat from the EP to Thought of Many Ways. That was all D Red. You know what I mean? That was wow. all D Red speaking, right there. So, speaking of Thought of Many Ways, you know, let's go into a break real quick. Give him this uh, Bonnie Boys classic. We'll be right back. C note right here on the Murder Manson Music Show. Don't go. That's classic. classic shit, man. You feel me? Yeah. Come up and go with a bobby yeah. on this shit. Straight jamming. And, and, and you know what I like about that, too? It's got that eight. Let's bring back on C-Note. C-Note, that's got that classic H-Town sound, but it's also got some it, it mixed with a little bit of, you know, like L.A. a little bit, too. I mean, that could be big. Yeah, you know, all over the West Coast. How big was that oh, song oh. in that album, that double album? Man. Man, uh, yeah, we definitely had that West Coast funk in there, man. But uh, and that album was real, 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 real big for us. It's still like uh, one of the number ones, you know what I mean? It was real big, real big, man. Double album. And uh, we did uh, hella, hella copies, you know what I mean? Thousands of copies, man. Like way back when the independent game was like first, you know what I mean? We didn't wait. On the record label, that was one thing about it. We wasn't waiting on no major record labels or nothing. We did what we had to do when we wanted to do it and how we wanted to do it. You know what I mean? No bosses over us. We was our own boss. You know what I mean? So, you know, we had we had big success and plenty of fun with that, man. You know, for real. I was a door. Man, I, I'm about to say, I salute y'all for that and, and having that independent grind, especially for sharing that type of shit with us now because a lot of motherfuckers got to understand that, you, you know, you don't really need a, a boss to, uh, to to make moves sometimes. Sometimes you got to be your own boss. Control yeah, your man, own so, shit because everybody don't feel your dream or don't, they don't see your shit the way you see it. They don't see it, you know what I mean? When we were dropping that, I had I had a, 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 somebody behind it that had, like, plenty of money and they was like, it was like, yeah, help us put this album out or something, you know, put put some money behind us with it. And they was like, you know, somebody told them, nah, man, they, they ain't got with it. Nah, they ain't got it. You know what I mean? They ain't believe in us, in mm-hmm. other words. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to show y'all right quick, you know what I mean? And put that thing out there and shit, everybody looking around like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like trying to ride the wave with us, you know what I mean, once we did it. So, you know, we, we ain't wait on nobody, man. We just did the thing and. I felt it and felt it in the moment and kind of just knew that that's what it was because I was always, I always kept my ear to the streets and people coming back telling me stuff and, you know, like they like this or mm-hmm. they like that. So I always knew that it was a go, you know what I mean? It was a go. So we had, right. we had, uh, 
we did our thing on that for sure, for sure. Right, and I'm pretty sure oh, after uh after the major star seeing y'all make y'all own moves, like I'm pretty sure they were trying to throw stuff at y'all. Then is that why y'all stayed stayed uh, independent too? Because it was more or less like y'all didn't believe in us at first, and we and y'all already seeing the bread, so it ain't no even it ain't even really no need for the record company, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what happened now? Don't get us wrong. We would have we would have signed a deal if someone would have came right and came proper to us. But unfortunately, uh, that that never really happened. But yeah, we had plenty of calls from plenty of labels, uh, from Sony to uh, Jive Record, Barry Weiss calling my house. You know what I mean? And uh, mm-hmm. we we just a few a few things. So uh, I don't know why some deals didn't go through, but yeah, we got uh, even when I dropped my solo project with uh, Diamonds in Your Face and all that, I, uh, I got mm-hmm. flew down, uh, Def Jam South flew me down, you know what I mean, before uh, before they signed Ludacris and all that, Ludacris was their first artist on that, so I was really supposed to be like right there in that wave right there, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we, had, we had a lot of calls, a lot of success, but the thing about it, a lot of them people up top, up top in New York and all that, they really don't know about this part of the South like like we think they do at first. Well, at least way back then they did. You know what I mean? So it's kind of just now caught up, like, you know, a few years back. They kind of just now really got on the South, and they really think, like, Atlanta is really the South. You know what I mean? They really kind of really lost on the South as far as it go for Texas and, 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 and this area over here, you know, this area over here. Right. But, they do the same uh, shit with but, Memphis too, you know what I'm saying? Like Houston and yeah. Memphis is two of them spots that that's that's pine sitters and trend sitters and hip hop period. But when it when yeah. it comes to uh talking about the South, they don't gravitate towards those two cities for yeah. some reason. I don't fucking know why, yeah. but Yeah, I don't know. Just, I like they lost a little bit sometimes, like they lost in the South so don't know what, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, you know, so the biggest thing they know is probably rap a lot, you know what I mean? So they be like, Damn, right. uh, if y'all that hot why why, you know, why y'all ain't on rap a lot or why Lil James ain't got y'all uh, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. So they really just be lost kinda they really just kinda lost a little bit, man. That's what I got out of it when I when I was, you know, uh approached by them. They really was lost. They told me they was lost, you know what I mean? They told me that, so I was like, Man, you know, so we basically got a lot, you know, had a lot of work to do, but I'm sure they know about it now since the success of uh, all uh, Chameleon Airs with the Grammy and Powwows and, the, you know, the Slim Thugs and they, they air with the Swisher House, but for some reason, uh, definitely screwed up clicks to the guy in the door before all those guys did, you know what I mean? Because if they have got me that Def Jam South deal, uh, which mm-hmm. I wish was on the table, Shit, we'd have been probably the biggest ever down here. You know? I mean, I would have right. got all this. Those would probably guys, be a different Kiki's interview. For real. Everybody, yeah, yeah, you know Hell what I mean. Yeah. I would have had everybody under under the umbrella. Everybody, you know what I mean. So, but it didn't happen for whatever reason. And I, like I say, I was I'm really from the streets, and at that time, all I can remember is I was fighting the um, I was fighting the case at that time, and like I was on like bond for like two or three years or something. And mm-hmm. and all I can remember was Scarface. He was, you know, executive producer of the stuff. So, and all I can remember is him asking me some about, you know, some about my case. I don't know if they thought I was like a risk of they give me so much money, maybe I would end up in jail somewhere, or some, some, some. You know what I mean? Cause, you know, right. we really, we we really, we really was out there in the streets. You know what I mean? So, so uh, I don't know if they thought it was a like a flight risk or whatever. You know what I mean? But right. like I say, we can we can we keep pushing, man. We keep pushing, man. That's all we can do. Keep pushing. Hell yeah! And one 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 of my favorite songs as within the last few years with all of y'all on it, man, is that uh that motherfucking Ace Town anthem, Point Blank. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask you about your 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 connection with the uh, SPC and them guys over there. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't SPC? get enough credit either. Yeah, the uh, SPC. But that SPC, song, what y'all yeah. got with Point Blank? That Ace Town anthem. That's that shit, man. Man, all them guys, yeah, them like my old, them like my OGs. I look up to them, like, cause, you know, like I say before, before I was start rapping, them, them guys, there, all them, I'm influenced by all them, like, uh, 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 what I want to say, K Reno, and man, the mm-hmm. first, he's a, he's the first one that I ever seen. I was probably 
13, 14 at a concert and, and probably shouldn't have been there. And maybe even mm-hmm. younger than that. And um I would say I probably was younger than that. And uh K Reno was performing. They used to have these, like these little dances at uh at a little uh this little church, like behind the church they would have, you know, the little shacks behind the church where they made food out the church or something, where they would throw dances right. in there for the teenagers, you know what I mean? So but K Reno, I just remember going there with my older cousins and K Reno was rocking the crowd. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, mm. this dude, you know what I mean? So, and that left mm-hmm. a stain on my brain. I still remember that. You know what I mean? So, and uh, and my cousin, he's the one. He always, you know, he kind of influenced me on the rap too. So, you know, I was there with him. And, uh, man, that left a stain on my brain. So I always remember those guys. And then as I got older, that's when I heard of uh, Point Blank, them, and, you know, all that. And, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I definitely... I, I used to love uh, Point Blank when we was on Biden. We used to jam Point Blank, and he had that song, uh, son, you say, uh, his son was mad because they wouldn't let him play in his casket. Man, we thought that was the hardest yeah. line ever, man. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I Point like, Blank got them classic cool. lines, man. Yeah, so so I definitely feel I, I love the Blanks. I love all them guys, man. They, You know, they trendsetters for sure. For sure, for sure. They got a lot, a lot to do with the uh, Houston music scene and the way it went and things like that. And Gangsta Nip, you know, we used to love Gangsta Nip on Biden. Yeah, you know, shout out to my brother. Nip, <laughs> yeah, we young to standing on, you know, standing on the corner on the cut, young. We young, you know what I mean? 13, 14, young, young guys, 15. And we jamming shit like Nip when he was on that rap a lot era and you know, he cut off yeah. your arm and eat it like a cheeseburger. You know what I mean? Right, you heard me, <laughs> man. We <laughs> <laughs> was on that, man. So, yeah, man. Shouts yeah. out to the landlord, man. The God of horror. Court, yeah, man. man. That's our brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. but that, <laughs> that whole thing, before man. Before the show about K Reno, um, seven albums. And what are your yeah. thoughts on that, man? Seven. That's amazing. At one day, seven albums, man. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, when he first told me he was dropping seven albums, I was like, "Wow, we we was at some, we was at So South, you know, we uh we do business with uh So South and uh they uh do di- digital uh, distribution for us. So we was over there and he was talking, talking. And he was saying he dropping seven albums at one time. I was like, seven albums? I said, man, I don't think that's been done before. I said that might be some some Guinness Book of World Records shit right there. You know what I mean? Seven albums, damn. So. You know, he was telling me he going to drop that. So I was like, man, big ups on that, man. So I heard he even done it now. So, you know, that's big ups to him, man, for real, for real. Props. Yeah. Maybe yeah, props. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> that's good for, for rap, period. You know what I mean? The way rap music is today, especially in the mainstream, something like this needs to be celebrated by all because um, it, it, it's lyricism, it's substance, storytelling, metaphors. I mean, you know what the UK Reno is. Um, it yeah. needs to be celebrated by the whole industry, man. Yeah, real talk. But yeah, hey, uh, I know you're pressed for time, Sino, but I want to bring on a caller and then play another track um, real quick. Uh, here's a caller uh, from France. This is the homie, uh, Lord Sinister. Uh, Sin, uh, how you doing, man? You're on the, you're on the phone with Sino, the Body Boys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, Scott. Hi, McJay. Hi. I see that. Let's tell us about the, the song Club Around and uh, it represents the hood and also how can the ID of the cover logo uh, associated with uh, immediately with, with all your covers uh, or like a cover botany, all that. What are you saying? Something about the Clover logo on the cover? Oh, uh, uh, how can the ID of the Clover logo Oh, the idea of the Clover logo. Yeah. Oh, the idea of the Clover logo on the cover. Uh, that's that's strange. You asked me that. Uh, what happened with that? Uh, that was on the Forever Biden the album cover. Uh, I think that's what he's talking about. Uh, we had the uh, the Diamond Out Clover on there, and uh, that we came with that idea for our second album is because. Through all the times, uh, after we dropped all them anyways, you know, we from the street, so a lot of things was going on behind the scenes, you know what I mean? So uh, it was always at least uh, 
two, like, you know, I'm going to say one half of my group I was always in jail, and that was like one of our problems, too, is coming up in the industry, you know what I mean? Like, I never right. could have a whole group all together at one time. You know, this guy, he's in jail, this guy's in jail, and me, D-Red, and Willene or whatever is left to perform. Even Willene, he even had a time where he went to jail and did some time. So it was like trying to keep the group together. So basically that Clover on the album cover was like, some of the members was incarcerated at the time, so I couldn't do nothing about, you know, no photo shoot or nothing like that. And me as a uh, executive producer and stuff like that, I had to make that decision. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw the clover on there, which stood for Cloverland, you know what I mean? And I'm right. just going to put the, put the stuff on the there and, and just show some love to the hood because I can't put the pictures of the guys because I, I don't have no clear photos of them to – to even make an album cover, you know what I mean? We got this guy in jail. Even though he recorded songs before he went to jail, all that he's not here no more. So I'm kind of forced to do it like this to keep the keep the ball rolling. You know what I mean? It was either that or right. nothing was gonna happen. Smart you know business what I mean? move. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was like forced to do that. Same as uh, same for my independent album, uh, my first solo. That's how that came about. You know, 50% half of my group was in jail. So I was like, shit, I got, you know, we got this big buzz, this big following. I got to keep dropping music. I got to keep making albums that people want it. But, you know, half my group is in jail. So what am I to do? I, shit, I got to drop a solo album. That's how, you know, Diamonds in Your Face came about and See you No know, Third Coast Born came about. Because I was really forced to, you know, make those moves as a executive producer and, you know, just as as, as my whole dream. So that was my whole dream. I could have dropped my solo album first, but me, I was like, you know, I got to bring the homies with me. Let the homies do something. You know what I mean? I'm, that's the type of person I am. I'm like, man, let's, let's, let us all do something. You know what I mean? Let us all yeah. come up. So that's what it was about. But in the end, you know, all, things don't work out how you want to all the time, so you just got to go with the flow. You know what I mean? And that's how they, that's how they Clover came on the album, man. I held it you know, down. You know what I mean? About. That's how that Clover came about, man. Yep. Yeah. I'm jealous about our soul, your, your soul album, South Coast Bone 2000. This album was yeah. another level for you. And uh, tell us about, about this album uh, and also about this song, Drastic, which is big with his big gambo on it. Drastic. I couldn't album. hear him clear on the end. What did he say? Yeah, he said Drastic on the uh, Third Coast Born 2000. Uh, with Big Steve. Oh, Drastic. With Big, Big Steve. Steve. Yeah. Oh, okay. Drastic. You know about Drastic. <laughs> uh, it's funny you asked yeah. about that, man. Rest, rest, rest in peace, uh, Mafia, old Big Steve, man. Me and Big Steve was, yeah. was like, real, real cool. And, um, and uh, you know, I just felt like I had to do something with him. I had to work with him. He's working with Fat Pat on Body Rock. And all that, you know, and I was like, man, I got to get you on. I got to get you on something. So Drastic was that one we came up with. And M. King, Melvin King did the beat. He also did the album cover with that clover on there, too. So I was kind of connecting with M. King. And he did Third Coast Born album cover as well. So I was just, you know, connecting with him. But uh, he came up with this beat. That beat was like, whoa. It was a it was a nice beat, nice funky beat. So, you know, I put Big Steve on there. And he came up with the hook on his own. It was like times are getting drastic. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, that's nice. So uh, he dropped that, had him on the hook, and you know, we made that thing come together like magic. And you know, drastic, man. That's what it is. Times is getting drastic. You know what I mean? Right. right. Uh, yeah, y'all, y'all uh, put out a lot of classics. <laughs> We got the diamonds in your face. Um, if you want to go to that real quick, do you got time to stick around for a few more questions after this track? Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. I'm riding with y'all. Time moving fast, but I'm with you. I'm with you. It's going by fast. That that's a play this song, and we're gonna chop it up with C note, and then we're gonna find out when we come back what he's got going on right now, what he's got coming up in the future. You know what I'm saying? Don't well, go to watch we, the Murder Master Music Show, UGS for Life. Man, that's a yes, classic C note right there. You know what I'm saying? When we, we, when we get out of here, we got a couple tracks we're going to play at C note center. You know? <laughs> um, 
that's what I'm talking about. But what do you got coming out uh, that we can look forward to? Oh, uh, man, uh, right now I just dropped uh, Birds vs. Words. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, it's uh, on digital, and, you know, we got hard copies screwed and chopped and regular versions, you know what I mean? And uh, so you can find that online, uh, iTunes, Spotify, whatever site. You shop on, uh, it's available. And also, uh, we got the Cloverland compilation uh, with me, Lil Flip, uh, and, I mean, you know, with Botany Boys, Block Boys, and Lil Flip, you know, it's like a little Cloverland thing we did. Just put it out there and uh, just let people mm-hmm. know we're still working and everything, man. So they need to check that out. And, you know, we working, man. If you ain't checked the new video out, we filmed uh, Ride Slaps. Uh, that's a new video, uh, we uh, shot it off the Cloverland compilation and stuff. It's like a little tribute to UGK and Pimp C them. You know, you know, I did a lot of work with UGK and them and all let them on they they album uh, riding dirty album. You know what I mean? And I'm on mm-hmm. dirty money, so you know what I mean. I got a lot of credits out there, man. You know, getting our things gold and platinum, man. You know how we do it. Hell yeah! Damn. Rest in peace to the pimp, but, man. But but uh, this year here, man, y'all gonna be looking forward to some, definitely some more music coming from the whole Cloverland family, man. Everything, so you know, got some coming soon, some brewing up, man. We gonna stay, we gonna we gonna keep it out there, man. We we love music, that's what we do with centers, and you know, we gonna keep dropping them things, man, for the show. Man, that's what's up, man. Sure. If uh, people want to get at you for verses or, or shows or whatever, uh, what's the best way they can reach you, uh, C so you know? Uh, anybody want to get at me for verses and shows, man, uh, they can get at me, C-Note, S-U-C, at gmail.com, man. You know, uh, get at me, uh, serious inquiries only, man, you know. And, yeah, don't uh, be fucking up, around. Man. Yeah, for real, for yeah. real, you know what I mean? It's a G, it's about business, man, so if you serious, you know, hit me, hit me up on that. C-Note, S-U-C, at gmail.com, man, and, uh, we, we, we can do business for show, for show. There's no problem man, with that, thank man. You. But yeah, and you check out that birds versus birds, though. Coming on the man. show, man, we really appreciate okay, having you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, please let uh, D Red and everybody else know they're welcome on here too anytime, man. Yeah, 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 anytime. We need to do a screwed up click uh, round table, Prez. Get all of them on. Try to get all y'all on. And just For sure, man. Up. I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? That'd be dope, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm with yeah. it, man. I'm with it, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, well, definitely any time, just you, let man. me know. We'll try to put that together. Yeah. Okay, brother. I'm with it, man. I'm with it, man. Prayers, Scott, I'm, I'm with it, man. It's, 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 that's what's up, man. Murder Match Mitchell, man. It's going down. Third Coast Boy, man. We in there. Third yeah. Coast, yeah. man. You <laughs> know, balling out right here, man. Why don't you intro this song, man? We get out of here. Balling out. Balling out, man, you know, off the new album, Birds vs. Words. Check it out, man. If you're listening, you're tuned in, man. Pick up your phone right now. Go to iTunes, whatever, and download this album, man. I promise everybody who hear this album be like, man, hold up. You know what I mean? That's that, that's that shit right there. That's what we've been missing. That's what we've been waiting on, you know what I mean? So check out yeah. that album, Birds vs. Birds Words, you know what I mean? What that really is, that's the streets versus the beach, you know what I mean? Like two shots say, do you want to rap or sell dope, man? You know what I mean? Birds vs. Right. Words, that's what that's about, man. So check out the new album. This the single off the album, Balling Out. If y'all like it, call in request on every radio station you can think of, especially the murder mix, man. So, you know, it's going down, man, third coast. See note off that botany right here. Let's do it. Man, that song, we got to give y'all another fucking banger. Because that one, that one was one of them songs that would make you feel it for more. So everybody go out and get yeah, it man. Uh, right now, man. I'm telling you, birds versus words. Let's bring on uh, See note again, right. man. Oh, yo, chop it up with it. Then we're going to play the uh, this this uh, other track called High. Man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking High about. High teaching little flip, yeah, yeah, man. You know what I mean? Got to play that, man. I didn't want to say R.I.P. to all the homies, man. Before I go, that's all, man. Make sure I represent for the click. I just want to say uh, R.I.P. to you know to, to Fat Pat, R.I.P. to Fat Pat, his brother Hawk. 
You know, my little cousin Gator, R.I.P. B.G. Gator, R.I.P. to the man, the general screw. You know what I mean? DJ Screw, R.I.P. to him, man. And uh, all other soldiers, uh, Big Melo. You know, we lost 3 2 recently, R.I.P. to uh, 3 2, man. And, uh, man, that's all the fallen soldiers, man. If I forgot somebody, man, you know, uh, it's just much love, man. You know, we love y'all. Already, man, it's all right, Peter. The whole clique, man. We love y'all. We're going to keep riding for y'all. And, man, that's what it is, man. I'm going to represent to the end, man, for sure. We just hold it down. I'm going to hold it down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we just had Mr. Right. Servi from No Limit. You know, we, we was talking about, like, man, all the cats from No Limit that are gone. You know what I'm saying? Trey 8 and, uh, you know what I'm saying, Magic and Soldier Slim and, and then, uh, uh, it's the same way with Houston, man. Like you said, Fat Pat, Hog, uh, Three Two, yeah, Wicky uh, Cricket, Hello. You guys Wicky lost Cricket. that old Chris and Beef Wicky Cricket. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys lost so many influential parts yeah. of the city. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, sir. But you guys just still hold the ones that are still here. You guys are still holding it down for everybody. And uh, representing still holding it down, guys. man. You know what I mean? Still holding it down, and you know, you know for sure the city would be in a better place if they all was here. We know for sure that, right? You know what I mean? I miss right. Mafia on there, R.I.P. Mafia too, man. You know what I mean? All of them were good people, man, good good people, good-hearted people, and they was all legends, you know what I mean? Legends in the making, man, and they've gone too soon, man. So, you know, I just like to represent, man, represent for them for sure. Definitely Hell riding yeah. on my shoulders, definitely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it was a, a huge honor having you on the show. We look forward to the next time. Um, but right now, we got to get high, man. Tell everybody about this track, you know. Oh, man, uh, this track, I had to bring my boy a little flip back uh, on this one. You know, we did uh, mm-hmm. Diamonds in Your Face together, you know what I mean? Uh, I brought him out. I was the first one to put him on with that Diamonds in Your Face, and, you know, that that uh, regional radio hit and, you know, blew him up. And, you know, he got his major deal off that. So I had to come back, reach back, and he reached back and showed me some love and, and uh, jumped on this high track, you know what I mean, produced by Mr. Lee. And we just, you know, that's something we like to do. We we, we blow dro, you know what I mean? We drank a little drink, sipping sip a little scissor every now and then. And, you know, and shit, this is just about getting high. And it's, it's like a metaphor, too. You know, you're getting high, you elevate elevate your mind, man, you know what I mean, and just, you know, getting high to a high level, high level in life, man, so, you know, just sit back, man, getting high, man, that's what it is, man. Oh, yeah. Really? Really. We're going to go out for this track, and uh, man, we'll, we'll uh, catch up with y'all tomorrow night. we got Free Ray Ray coming back to the Burner Master Music Show. We're going to chop it up with him, see what he's got going on. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, next week, uh, man, we'll uh, we'll see you guys uh, with some more stuff. This right, Saturday. the real Rick Ross, Ross right? motherfuckers. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying. We ain't, talking, we ain't talking about the other guys. We got the real uh, Rick Ross. Freeway Rick, shout out to the homie, man. Oh, look, yeah, gangster, always huh? good to have him on the show, man. Always good to have him gangster. on the show. But, uh, That's gangster. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure, man, definitely. That guy, uh... You know, and, and the cool thing about him, what he's doing now is he's trying to, you know what I'm saying, go out and educate people and, and help the youth and, and everything. He's doing a lot of positive things. So shout out to Freeway Ricky Ross. And uh, uh, man, we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. But if you want to check out this interview, go to uh, UGSforlife.com. It'll be up there probably uh, probably by about midnight tonight. We'll say it's high. See you no know, little flip. <laughs>